Well, welcome back, everyone, to yet another mod showcase. Hope you all are having the most wonderful of wonderful days. My name is Leaf, and it's so great to have you guys back once again to check out all the new awesome mods that just came out on Nexus over the past week. So before we do get started, am I paused? No, I'm not. Uh, modding is not officially endorsed by Frontier. When you do mod, you do mod at the risk of breaking your own game. But if you do follow all the instructions laid out by the tutorials and the mod makers, you guys will have no problems whatsoever. Now, we're going to get started right over here. And I'm so excited to get into this. This is going to be the Fjall Cattle, otherwise known as the Swedish Mountain Cattle. These guys are incredible. I was able to make these thanks to Stalagmite. He actually commissioned me to make these guys, which by the way, go check out my Ko-Fi down below if you want a commission. But these guys are incredible. They're some of my favorite cows ever now, just because of how gorgeous they are. And let me just get a little bit more snow happening over here, uh, just to show it off a little bit. Never mind, I forgot that the snow doesn't stay. But these guys are incredible. So of course they are a Swedish breed, so keep that in mind. Uh, actually, a very fun fact, you can tell that they're pure fjall cattles if their ears are completely black, which I think is pretty neat. So of course these guys are really, really awesome. They're more so oriented for like colder climates, which I think is pretty neat. But what's even more neat about these guys is I gave them four different color combinations. Uh, the males have two and the females have two. They're really freaking beautiful and I love the pictures that I got over here, especially of the little baby. Unfortunately, I have breeding turned off in the zoo, so I don't really want to show off any babies. Just in case if something does break within recording, I have a lot of mods in here. Not really sure which ones do work, which ones don't for the baby, so I just want to make sure that we don't have any of those issues. But here's a female over here, and something that you may notice is a little bump on their head. This really puts the name Cowlick into perspective. All Fjall Cattles have this tiny little bump on their head with a little extra hair, and I think that's actually like one of the cutest things ever. So you can see that right over here with the males as well. They have a little bit more of a subtle one right there. But I did bring into account all the smaller details with these guys. I even gave them udders, which was pretty fun to do. And for the males, I actually have this little, like, I'm not sure what you call that. I'm not sure if that's their little thing down there. But I did include that down there with uh, a little extra hair details. So you may notice that the eyelashes, if you can actually see them because they're actually covered in black, uh, but they do have eyelashes, and I was able to copy that over here, down there to the belly. So it gives it just a little bit more extra detail. I'm really proud of that. That was something my good friend NDP told me to do, and it really did come out super well, and I'm very happy with that. But check these guys out! Oh my god, like, I can't get over these guys. They're some of my favorites. But that's about that for right there, but make our way throughout over here. We have a mod by both Gaboy and Jorno. I said it right this time. Uh, so this is the Indian wolf. These guys are a subspecies of the gray wolf, I believe. Let's just triple check that, please. Uh, yeah, Canis lupus. Uh, so yeah, they are a subspecies of the gray wolf. And they're a lot more skinnier than the uh, regular wolves. I really do like this. So they really aren't too common in zoos. At least in the new... new uh, oh, wow. Uh, at least in the new world slash uh, North America. But they really are super amazing. And I really do love Gaboy and Jorno bringing us this species. Just because it seems to be like one of the most unique types of wolves out there. And they did such an incredible job on this guy. So of course these guys are in the Jungle Book. And they have a lot of like different color variations i'm sorry my adhd brain is kind of like going off and again one of the things that was added in 1.10 is a chorus behavior so you could see that one pack leader is just going to start howling and then all the other ones will follow around that and i think journal may be adding that into planet zoo plus with a whole bunch of different animals that will participate in that i really do think that that gives like you know your zoo such a different feel when you have like all of your animals vocalizing it really helps it feel a lot more alive and that's why i always say about um about like sound design in planet zoo i think that's easily one of the most important things to include in there so yeah, these guys look incredible, and I really do suggest you guys check these out. They were kind of buried within the avalanche of fish mods, and these guys deserve a lot more love. 
Making our way over here is another one by Giorno and Gaboy. Giorno for the coating and Gaboy for the beautiful looks on this guy. This is, of course, the Brown Hyena making its triumphant re reappearance. These guys are, I believe, the second largest hyena species, and they're honestly one of my favorites now. No contest. Look at these guys. Look at... I don't know what's happening with them. I think he's just kind of acting a little slow. Let's actually wake this one up. But these guys are the second largest hyena species, and what I love about these guys is all the different coat variations that Kaboy was able to bring in here. If we pause this guy right for a second over here, forgive his cuts and bruises, he had a little bit of a rough time. Uh, but you can see that they actually have striped legs, and they have this beautiful, beautiful brown coat with some like kind of pseudo stripes in there. This is a really incredible animal, and a really incredible model, really frontier official right here. Uh, it just looks so gorgeous, and I'm so happy Gaboy was able to cover this animal again. Because we went a while without this guy being made. I know uh, Dr. Hyena actually made one a while ago, but this one is so gorgeous. Look at this dude. Oh my god, that is incredible. And yeah, they do have those like hyena vocalizations, so that's always super good to have. Uh, I'm not sure what's besties. I'm not sure what's happening there. I think that's a D. I'm not really sure. But either way, uh, I'm sure they'll get that fixed up. Look at this though. What a beautiful creature. I really do love how well the fur looks too. Something I always love about Good Boy's work is just how awesome they got the fur. He does such an incredible job with that. But making our way throughout here, we have a reptile to check out. This one is done by my good buddy Vince. This was a commission of his, and I cannot wait to show you guys him. This is the American Crocodile, and I know so many of you guys may be saying, but we already have the American Alligator in the game. What's this? Well, the American Crocodile is a somewhat endangered uh, crocodilian that we do have in North America. It's more so found around, like, the South and stuff like that. Uh, it's, I believe it's on Cuba as well and in some parts of Mexico, but it is a very rare species to find. Uh, not too many zoos have them, but I was lucky enough to see these guys at Zoo Miami. Really, really incredible creatures over there. They're super awesome. Uh, but Vince, you did such an incredible job on this, buddy. Check out all the details and the scales over here and all the detail in the face. It looks badass and I'm super excited to see that all come into play. One of the things I really do love about Vince is how he is able to handle the scales and the texture on some of these animals and it really does look super amazing. Seeing how well this kind of fits with the model, it really does wrap it super well and it looks incredible. They also have unique juveniles as well, but unfortunately I'm not really able to cover them today uh, because I don't want to crash my game because I haven't really tested babies on the fish mods just yet. That's a true excuse right there, but either way, really incredible animal. I really do suggest you guys get this underrated animal so much because it's super awesome. And look at him go, he's going right for the water, or maybe not. Now we're going to take a little dip into the freshwater mods, and we're just going to start off with the biggest one in here. This is the Mekong Giant Catfish, one of the largest fish species, and I believe the largest catfish species. These guys are found in the Mekong River within China, I want to say. Let's make sure that's right. The Mekong Basin. Okay, so Vietnam, Cambodia, uh, not Cambodia, that's all the way over there, uh, Thailand, and some other countries in there. I do apologize, I don't have my map open on my other tab. But these guys are incredible. Of course, this is made by Go Boy, uh, coded by Giorno, and I believe Buff Sue had a wonderful part in making sure that this guy swims really well. These guys are incredibly beautiful. I'm so impressed with how well they were able to get all the detail on this guy. And it really is super awesome just to get these river monsters into the game. It really is super great to have all of that come into play. Now making our way throughout here, we also have the European eel. These guys are incredibly awesome as well. What you guys may not notice about these guys is that these guys are extremely endangered. Uh, I believe they're actually critically endangered, which is very sad to see. Uh, but it is super awesome just to get these guys in the game. All the rest of the fish this week will be done by me and Buffsu. All of these are going to be ports or slate model edits on our end. Really beautiful creature though. I really do love these guys. Super awesome. 
We're making our way throughout here, though. We have a lot of other fish to check out. I believe this is, yes, the Arctic Railing. Super awesome creature. These guys are, let alone not found in the Arctic. They're actually found in North America, a lot more of the Pacific Northwest and stuff like that. And they inhabit rivers and lakes. Really awesome creature, and I really do love the fins on them. Really, really beautiful, especially if you're trying to make a North American aquarium. Super awesome for that. Making our way throughout here, though, we have the climbing perch. This one's kind of cool. These guys are found in Asia, around like China, uh, I believe Korea, Japan, and a few other places. What's very interesting about these guys is the fact that they can actually survive outside water from anywhere from one hour to about eight hours i want to say they can actually traverse land a little bit by using their fins they got them from a to b and it really is super awesome just to see this kind of uh behavior come up in fishes and you know what makes me even happier because now i actually have an excuse for these guys walking on land isn't that right fish naysayers I'm just kidding. Of course, making our way throughout here, we also have, what is this? The Nile tilapia. Very famous farmed fish. Uh, tilapias are very much up and coming when it comes to, you know, uh, the marine agriculture, I guess? Aquaculture? Yeah, aquaculture. So these guys are often farmed for their meat, but they're awesome creatures nonetheless. Really awesome creature to keep with. I guess your crocodiles with your hippos and stuff like that. Hopefully later down the line, Buffsu and I can actually add interspecies enrichment for these guys. Really awesome creature nonetheless though. I really do suggest you guys check these guys out. Really, really common aquarium species for the most part. Either these guys or any other kind of tilapia. Really awesome too. I love the kind of like shade of blue on their face. Super awesome to have that. We also have the Kafu Killifish. What a hell of a name. Uh, these guys have both a red variant and a blue variant, so keep that in mind, the albino functions as a blue variant. But these guys are found around the Congo River Basin. I want to say they're only found in Zambia or something else. Let me just triple check that. Zambia, yeah, I forgot to change the uh, Zupedia map. I do sincerely apologize on that if it breaks your immersion. But these guys are wicked awesome and wicked beautiful as well. You guys can throw these right in your aquarium and hopefully we can turn these guys into props as well because I know a lot of you guys don't really like the fish but you guys still want to build your aquariums. So soon rather down the line, uh, Nick and I will be working on getting a lot of these to be actual props. So that's something to keep in mind over there and what do we have over here we have the atlantic salmon these guys are pretty pretty famous around me uh a lot of them made their way up from the penobscot as well as the Saco river i know that's pretty famous over there again forgot to actually change the uh Zupedia map right there but these guys are salmonid species found only in the atlantic ocean and the freshwater rivers and lakes around there and yes this is one of the only salmons that's actually found in lakes so there are parts of maine that do have landlocked salmon and that is the state fish of the state of Maine, which I think is pretty swanky over there. But yeah, really incredible species over here as well. Making our way throughout here as well, we also have the common barbel. These guys are just a pretty swanky species. Uh, nothing really too crazy, just your typical freshwater fish from Europe. These all kind of look pretty funky, and I really do love having this wide variety of them in there. Uh, I believe this is a European. Nope, that is not the European grayling. Never mind. But you know what this is? This is the electric yellow cichlid. Could you tell? Uh, these guys are really incredible species, especially when you pair them with hippos and stuff. Again, unfortunately, I didn't actually get the chance to add interspecies enrichment this go around, but we will be adding that later down the line once we actually do get some time. I caught a whole bunch of fish this week and I just wanted to get them out for all of you guys. But these guys are really awesome. We're hoping to have a lot more cichlid species later down the line so in case if you guys do want to start collecting them this guy is the perfect one to start off with we also have my least favorite fish in here but for some reason people are downloading it this is the congo yellowfish and this guy looks absolutely disgusting i don't know why people actually are downloading this because it looks like the most disgust disgusting creature you will ever see and yes i'm telling that right to his face right now but yeah, these guys are a Congolese fish count found in the Congo River Basin, very much related to the labios that we received last week. 
actually no two weeks ago sorry a uh, really cool creature nonetheless though i always find it so interesting how the congo fish and even congo animals like the giant forest hog are some of the ugliest bastards out there look at this fish and tell me that this is not like one of the most ugliest things you will ever see really creepy ass looking fish but still super awesome to have these guys in game nonetheless because i don't know anyone else who would want them Again, another kind of weird looking fish. This is the Cornish Jack. I'm sorry, I have to look at the names because I have way too many of these guys in here. These guys are a super interesting fish because they actually are able to produce electrical currents. Uh, very interesting uh, morphology right over there. And they also have a kind of flat looking face. I really do love how goofy these guys look. Uh, and yeah, very interesting creature. These guys are named uh, by European settlers, even though they are found in Africa. Colonists, sorry, wrong word. Uh, but these guys are kind of interesting over here. I really do love the coloration on these guys. They have like all these nice yellows and whites going on. But yeah, they're just a super weird creature and it's super awesome got like all these weird guys in here. Another catfish for this week. This one is the blue catfish. It's very much closely related to the channel catfish that we received a few weeks ago. Really awesome creature, North American over here as well. I believe they're found both in freshwater and saltwater. And yeah, these guys are one of the only fish that are able to eat. I forget what kind of carp, but it is an invasive carp to the new, new uh, blah, 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 to the new world. So that is super awesome to see right there how this fish is being used against like overpopulation of that kind of fish. But yeah, these guys are just super awesome. They have this relatively nice blue hue. And yeah, they're just relatively gorgeous creatures, even though, you know, they look kind of like that. But making our way throughout here, I'm trying to see if we missed anything. We definitely did. We also have the Kenyi Cichlid. These guys are found in the Lake Mawali, I want to say. Uh, so they're found in like the lake with every single one of those cichlid species that you can find. A lot of really awesome biodiversity in that lake. It super is awesome. It is super awesome. Sorry. But yeah, these guys are just another cichlid species to go along with the yellow cichlid. They have a nice blue hue with a whole bunch of black stripes going throughout throughout them. Really awesome to have right there and super great just to be able to get all these cichlids in the game. And I believe this is the burbit. Yes, so this is the burbit. I believe these guys are related to carp. I need to make sure. Oh no, they're actually related to cod. Oh yeah, that's right. So this is, I forget what kind of cod they call it as. It has like another name. The, oh, it's called the lawyer. The uh, ling cod, that's what they call it. So these guys are a freshwater species, even though they are very much related to cod. It's very awesome species to have over here because it is very important in a lot of Northern European cuisines and the fishing culture up there. Really awesome creature nonetheless. I really do love its marbling on there. Really awesome creature. We also have another ugly African fish, but don't tell him I said that. We have the double trunk elephant fish, and they call it that because you may be saying, what if there's only one? It does have this little nub hanging off the bottom of it. You can kind of see it come into play right there. But yeah, these guys are named after elephants because of their long proboscis, which they use to kind of sift through the sediment at the bottom of lakes and rivers and stuff like that. Really awesome African fish over here. Again, the African fish always look like the creepiest damn things in the world, but it's super awesome to just get so many of them in here. But making our way throughout here as well, I believe we have a salmon in here that we forgot. Uh, I think we already covered the barbell. Yes, we did. Okay. Let me check my handy dandy uh, environment over here, I guess. Uh, we do have the Chinook Salmon. These guys are also known as the King Salmon. And yeah, he's going to start eating his brothers right there. That's totally fine. We can check out this one over here, though. Really beautiful creature. These guys are one of the largest salmon species uh, in North America, at least. Uh, really beautiful coloration on them. I believe this is their breeding morph. Again, salmons kind of change into a reddish hue once they do enter that kind of breeding phase of their lives. Uh, we still find it very iconic to have them with this kind of uh, look on them. So that's always something I really do love to see right there. But really gorgeous creature nonetheless. If you guys are making like a nice Alaskan or like Pacific Northwest set, like you know set up these guys are going to be perfect for like all those rivers over there really gorgeous creature nonetheless and i believe that should be it let me just triple check 
on our handy dandy little environment over here. African big eye catfish. That's one that we're missing. Uh, we could just check these guys out right through here. Uh, oh yeah, and I forgot we also have the African pike. Again, African big eye catfish, nothing too crazy. Imported from Fishing Planet. Just a nice African catfish species. They also have these kind of creepy blue eyes, which I think is kind of neat. Uh, but yeah, that's about that for them. I want to start making our way throughout here because I want to get to the uh, marine species a lot more. Uh, but if we make our way throughout here, European grayling, really quickly, very much related to the Arctic grayling from before, but you guessed it, these guys are from Europe. Uh, really nice silver coloration on the scales over there with the nice little red ridge up there really awesome in case you guys are making a european aquarium i have to say a lot of european fish are very underrated it's easily some of the most coolest fish you could get out there they seem relatively boring in practice but nah these guys are actually pretty damn cool so making our way throughout here common barbel gotta make sure that we find our way to the pike uh and i think it yep all the way down here one of them in here nothing too crazy really awesome creature though african pikes are related to all your other kinds of pikes muscalunge and stuff like that really awesome creature with a really really nice mouth over here very sharp teeth really awesome creature just to throw into like your african habitats but that is it for our freshwater species. I do apologize if I missed anything over there. But I have to get over here to our marine tank. And I want to get started over here with the common minke whale. Again, we're still trying to figure out the speed values. We kind of figured it out a little bit. But hopefully later down the line we can get it working a lot better. But this is the common minke whale. Relatively one of the smaller whales that we do have in the game now. So it's a lot more realistic to throw into your aquariums. Even though they really haven't been in captivity. Uh, but still really awesome creature nonetheless. We're just going to send him over to this trade center because he's just going to distract us a little bit too much. Moving over here, this is the Zone Tail Butterfly Ray, a critically endangered species of ray from the Southeast Asian waters. Uh, not the freshwater, but the marine waters, that's why he's in here. But yeah, really awesome creature nonetheless. I really do like all the little lines that they have over there on the bump map really super awesome and i really do love seeing more ray species come into play one of my favorites this week is the dragon moray eel these guys are super awesome and have such gorgeous coloration these guys are also known as a leopard moray eel and yeah that's about it for these guys really super awesome creature and we also do have the threadfin butterfly fish relatively common aquarium species over here these guys are called the Threadfin because of their thread-like appearance on them, and they are a schooling fish, so you probably want to throw a whole bunch of these guys into a tank at once. Super awesome species right there. We also do have the Orange Line Cardinal Fish, smaller, but also very important to have. I believe these guys are only found in the Indo-Pacific, and they are super awesome. They are just super crazy. I really do love them. They have some nice big eyes right there, which is super great to have. Just really good just to have all these reef fish in the game. We also have the Indo-Pacific Sailfish, found only in the Indo-Pacific. Oh my gosh, who would have guessed? These guys have some of the biggest sails body to uh, sail relative in the uh, whole animal kingdom. Really super awesome creature right here. I love these guys so much more than marlins, uh, which are a different type of like swordfish that you can get. Um, but yeah, just super awesome creature right there. We also have the Green Chromis, another very, 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 very popular aquarium fish. Uh, so in case of you guys are making a coral reef tank, you can just throw these guys in there. Really super awesome species to have and very versatile for a whole bunch of different aquariums because these guys are found pretty much world world worldwide in a whole bunch of different reefs. Over here, we have a relatively rare fish. We have the Red Eye Wrasse. These guys are only found in a small portion of islands around the Pacific Ocean. I believe on Christmas Island they're found in a couple other places. But these guys are super awesome. Named so because of their red eye. They also have a whole bunch of different colorations going on, if you can't tell. They have super awesome colorations. I really do love these guys. They look like they look like a little fruit salad. And I do apologize if you hear some jingling in the background. My dog is kind of scratching her little ear. 
but let's see what else we have over here. Ooh, this guy looks kind of funky. This is a gold tail angelfish. These guys are named so because, guess what, of their gold tail. I know, we're getting pretty creative with our names over here. Just wait till we talk about that boy right there. But yeah, these guys are super awesome aquarium species just to have. Another angelfish, can't hurt. We also do have the green sawfish. Who would have thought, literally, who would have thought this guy would be named the green sawfish? But yeah, these guys are super awesome. One of the largest sawfish species out there. These guys can actually get up to, I believe, like 12 feet long. I want to say bigger. Uh, but these guys are just super awesome. Sawfish are just like easily some cooler creatures out there. Related to sharks and rays, these guys are kind of like a middle ground in between the two. They have kind of like the jaws of a ray and like the body shape of a shark, but they also have that very nasty looking saw on front of them. Very cool to see all that come into play. What we also have over here is a blue surgeon fish. You guys may be saying, oh, but that is a hippo tang or that is a blue hippo tang. Well, you're also right. I just wanted to call it the blue surgeon fish. Sue me. These guys are super awesome. You guys may know these guys as dories if you're a normie. Really awesome creature to have nonetheless. I really do love this iteration of it because the colors just feel so much cleaner. But yeah, it's just a really awesome aquarium species to have right over there. And I want to see if we're almost done over here. We do have the two-spined angelfish. And I believe this is also called the coral beauty. And what an aptly named fish that is as well. These guys are incredibly beautiful because of all the different colorations that they have going on here. Orange, yellow, and blue. What else could you want? Just a really awesome creature to have. And a really nice angelfish to have in here as well. Because the other angelfish are a little bit too big for my taste, but I really do love the tinier ones. Hopefully we can get some flame angels in here relatively soon. But here we go. I believe this is one of our last ones. This is the orange clownfish. Another relatively different uh, version of the clownfish. These guys are an ocellar species, which is always great to have. But these guys are just incredibly beautiful as well. These guys have a protective layer of skin on them, which allows them to interact with sea and enemies, which normally sting any other creature. Uh, but they have a symbiotic relationship with the clownfish as well, which is just super awesome to have. And I believe we just have one more over here. We have the white grouper. Yes, I was about to say bass. No, those guys are freshwater. These are the white groupers. They are an incredibly beautiful species. Only found in the Atlantic Ocean. These guys inhabit a lot more of the rocky areas around there. But I believe they're semi-pelagic as well. I could be wrong on that. But just a really great creature to have nonetheless. And I believe that may be it. Let me just triple check. We've checked out all of these. Blue Surgeon Fish Chromis. And I believe we have covered all of them. Yeah, so that is about it this week. Another longer showcase. I do apologize for kind of storming you guys with the fish. Buff Zoo and I just really do love getting these guys in the game. And we really hope you guys do give them a chance. Well, the tiny little aquarium for these guys or something like that. Just give them a chance. I really do suggest you guys try it out. But thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know your favorites in the comments down below as always. Uh, I gotta say my favorite this week goes one and only to the brown hyena where we will end it this week. These guys are so freaking gorgeous. Uh, but thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. If you guys did enjoy, you already know what to do. I'm not even going to ask. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I can't wait to see you all in the next video. Take care. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. And have the most wonderful of wonderful days. Bye-bye now.